When it comes to affordable housing options, there's three that most people like to talk about. One of them is manufactured homes, one of them is modular homes, and the third one is tiny homes because they've become so incredibly popular. Today we're going to be going over the pros and cons of each one of these so that way you can make the best decision on your next affordable housing option. Currently in the United States, there's over 136 plants that are making manufactured homes and we have over 22 million people that own a manufactured home. So let's talk about manufactured homes. They're one of my favorite ways to get into affordable housing option for many people that are having a hard time finding a home in their specific area. Let's talk about the pros first. First of all, price per square foot manufactured homes are hands down beat about every other affordable housing option. Secondly of all, since 1976, HUD has improved on how they make manufactured homes. HUD stands for Housing and Urban Development. Before 1976, those houses were not built to any building standards whatsoever. So the government stepped in and said, hey, people are going to be living here. We have to make sure that these homes are durable and safe. I know a lot of people are like, the government has to step in. In this case, it was a good thing. There's some other pros to it. They get built very quickly. If you order yours off the lot, it takes normally, normally in a normal market, it would take about six to eight weeks to get to your location. Recently with the supply chain issues, it's taking up to a year. So right now, no matter what home you're going to be purchasing, it's going to be taking a little bit longer, whether it's manufactured, modular, or even a tiny home. But once it gets there, it usually shows up in one, two, three, even four pieces. The contractors put it together, they hook it up to your utilities, and you have a home within a couple days. You can't live in it right at that time. You still gotta get your occupancy certification, but it is livable at that moment. Now, I do get this question all the time. Can a manufactured home be put on a slab? The answer is yes. Can a manufactured home be put on piers? The answer is yes. I've been asked if a manufactured home could be put on a basement. Yes, you can put a manufactured home over a basement. But every area is going to have different rules and policies when it comes to manufactured homes. So like I've always said to everybody when it comes to these, make sure the land that you're putting on will accept manufactured homes. Make sure you understand what utilities you're going to need for that home once you get there. And then one more thing, make sure you're getting the right kind of loan for your manufactured home. I know your next question is gonna be, what lenders should I go to? It's going to depend on your area. Not every single area is gonna have a manufactured home lender. There are some national lenders as well. So check them all out in your local area. But one of my favorite places to always get the really best deals is your local credit unions. They will work with you a lot better than some of the national brands. Sorry, <laughs> it's the truth. Now manufactured homes, even though they come in different shapes and sizes, they also come with a lot more amenities that most people don't even consider. You can upgrade the flooring to any kind of flooring you want in most cases. You can upgrade all your appliances, the cabinetry, the type of roofing materials you want, anything you can think of you can upgrade but just know that anytime you upgrade it's going to cost you more of this now let's talk about the disadvantages when you talk about a manufactured home people say manufactured home do you mean like a trailer they have a preconceived idea that this is a terrible house because of what they've seen on television a lot of times the news reports love love to show a manufactured home park just toppled over like dominoes in most cases when you see those homes they weren't any homes that were built before 1993 because in 1993 they had changed all the building codes once again to make sure that they could stay in place because of what happened with Hurricane Andrew in 1992. That way that they knew that when they were building these homes that they would adjust to certain wind speeds. If you look at the United States map, there's wind speeds that are adjusted for manufactured homes. There's, there's wind speed one, two, and three. So when you're looking for a manufactured home, make sure you get the right manufactured home for the wind speed that you need for your area. Most of the people that are selling them are gonna know that, but in just in case, make sure that they have that correct wind speed for your area. Another disadvantage of a manufactured home is there's tons of places that don't allow for manufactured homes. And you'll find a piece of land and you think this is where I'm gonna put it, and then you find out there's restrictions, not just locally, even the HOA will say, you you can't have a manufactured home here. So it leaves people an option of putting them in a manufactured home park. But as we've seen across the United States, manufactured home parks have become extremely popular with, with institutional investors. And because of that, that means that they've been spiking up the rent so high that most people have been losing their homes. 72 year old D Jackson has lived at this mobile home park in Thousand Oaks since 1987. There were 35 people here. It was quite busy. Now she's the only one left. The park was sold to investors who want to redevelop the land. And that means Dee is losing her home of 35 years. 
And you think, how can they do this? Well, there's no regulations in a lot of manufactured home parks in most states, so they can jack up the rent as high as they want to. Not only that, if these people do have a chattel loan and they are in a manufactured home park, in most cases, they're not going to have the money or the income to move it to a new location. Not only that, if they did have the money, where are they going to move it to? Especially if they have an older model manufactured home, it's going to be very difficult to move it to a new park because they're going to require that manufactured home to be a lot newer. If I was to rate a manufactured home on a scale of one to 10. For affordability, I would say it's a 10. For accessibility right now, it's probably about an 8. For the appearance of what people think when they look at them, I'd say they're about a 7 or a 6. Some people just do not like that cylinder look of a manufactured home, but they've come a long way. So don't write them off just because you think that you know how they look. They've come a long way since the last time you've seen them. As far as options, I give them a 10. When it comes to chat loans, I'm going to give that a 5 because I know in some cases it's the only option you have, but but you really have to be careful because there is a lot of predatory lending practices when it comes to those so please please read every single word but if you're working with your rd va fha and conventional loans all of them are very good products less likely to have predatory lending practices used against you so i give that a 10. being able to find a location for a manufactured home i'll give that a seven because there are so many people that think they can put it in some place and then they find out they cannot i'm going to reiterate that again if you're looking at a piece of land make sure they allow for manufactured homes if that's what's something you're considering. All right, let's talk about modular homes because that is the most confusing thing for most people. When you say modular homes, in a lot of people's minds, they're thinking manufactured homes, which are not the same thing. Modular homes are closer to traditional building than they are a manufactured building. The only thing that makes them similar to a manufactured home is that a lot of the pieces are built in a factory and then those pieces are assembled on site. Modular homes can come in all different shapes and sizes. If you think of any style of home, it, like what modern, traditional, it doesn't matter. It can be made as a modular home. Modular construction has all sorts of pros. First of all, it's energy efficient. Everybody likes to save money on their energy bill costs and they are extremely energy efficient. Now, when it comes to the cost, <sighs> price per square foot, they sometimes will fall above what traditional home building is. Now it didn't used to be that way, but ever since everything that's happened with the pandemic, it has definitely turned that way. Another pro to a modular home is once the pieces are ordered and show up to your location, it doesn't take them long to put the house together. The time that it actually takes to put in the wiring and the plumbing and everything, that is what takes so much time. But the house being built itself, it's done lickety split. The other pro to modular construction is the versatility of it. Like I said earlier, you, you could dream it, they can build it. The con though is finding a modular home company that will actually deliver to your area. You may find a company that builds exactly the home you want to, even at the right price you want to, but they don't deliver to your state. And the reason being is they have to be certified and get approval from the state in order to deliver to that state. It stinks because there's a lot of really good modular home companies like in California and Texas, but they can't deliver in areas like New Jersey or Oklahoma. Another pro to modular construction is that you're going to have a lot less trouble trying to find a piece of land that will allow for modular homes because they're traditional built homes. They just happen to have the pieces built in a factory. In some cases, a lot of older restrictions will say no modular or manufactured homes. But if you take their house plans to them and show them exactly what type of home you're going to build, in most cases, they're going to take a look at those plans and realize the type of home you're going to be putting together and they will accept it because it looks just like a traditional built home. So they're not going to have a problem with it. Not in all cases, you know, there's some Karens on every board, but in most cases, they're going to say, okay. Now, when it comes to financing modular homes, this is one of those things that people get confused as well. You can get any kind of financing like you would for a traditional home build. If you are going to be building it from scratch, you're going to have to start with a new construction loan first, where they take draws. And then at the end of the construction period, then they will roll it into a 30 year loan. As long as you qualify for RD, VA, FHA, conventional, it doesn't matter. They will go ahead and finance you as long as you have the good credit scores. Now, when it comes to property taxes, you're going to be taxed on them just like you would a traditional house. Now, when you look at modular homes and it comes to the building codes, some of them will say that they're built to IBC, International Building Code. Some will say they're built to IRC, which is International Residential Code, which still fall in line with all your building codes in your specific area. So you don't have to worry that it's not going to meet building codes for your specific area. Now, another disadvantage to building modular is to find the right kind of contractor to put your 
modular home together, especially if you're using a modular home company that's not from your specific state. So you're gonna have to find one that can put it together. Some builders will lie and say that they are very familiar with putting together modular homes. And then when you get them together, they're not so familiar. And I want you to thoroughly investigate this person. I want you to ask them for contacts of other homes that they've built in the area. That's If they say, I, you can't speak to any of my previous clients, that's a big giant red flag. But still ask, well, at least let me know the address so I can drive by the house. That way you can do a little visual investigation. Look online ask to see their references, ask to see other referrals of homes that they built that weren't necessarily modular homes. You can find out a lot of things about people online. Make a quick video on Facebook if you have to. You'd be surprised how many people are willing to spill their guts when they see a post like that, especially if they don't like a builder. Oh, and do a Google search too, because if they've been in the newspaper, that's something you wanna know for the good, bad, and the ugly. So on a scale of one to 10 on affordability of a modular home, I give it like a five, mostly because they're not nearly as affordable as they were a couple years ago. As far as flexibility and having it done and delivered on time, again, before the pandemic, I would have given it a like 10 because that you would order it six weeks later, you would have it delivered. Now it seems like just because of the pandemic, it's probably like a five or six because it takes so long to get building materials to the factory before it's delivered to your location. Now, when it comes to versatility, I will give it a 10 because you can pretty much do whatever you want. If you can dream of the house, you can have it built in the factory and have it delivered to your house as a modular home. As far as energy efficiency, I also give it about a nine. I won't give it a 10 on this because anything deserves a little bit of room for improvement. When it comes to financing for a modular home, I give it a 10. There's a, there isn't any reason why you couldn't get any kind of loan package you can think of as long as you have the right credit scores and meet the requirements of the lender. Modular homes are one of my favorite things because of the fact it is so versatile and it can be done so fast. And I'm super impatient. My next home will be a modular home. So let's talk about tiny homes. Let's get into that. Tiny homes are super darn cute. I mean, like, look at them. They're just like little cottages. Every time I see one, I think of Hansel and Gretel going through the forest, you know, picking up breadcrumbs and going to the little cottage in the middle of the woods. Just like Hansel and Gretel, tiny homes can be really surprising and they're not exactly what they seem to be. Not that there's a witch inside, but price per square foot, tiny homes are super expensive. Another con to tiny homes is you don't have a lot of storage. Of course, this is a specific way of life for a lot of people, but not everybody can adjust to it. The third thing about tiny homes is that the financing options are extremely limited. You're gonna have to get a personal loan for a tiny home or you're gonna have to pay cash. And when it comes to the personal loans, you have a lot of different ways that you can have predatory lending practices happen to you. You can't get a traditional loan on them. You can't do like a 20 or 30 year loan. You're financing it like a boat. Another con is finding a good insurance company to insure it. Now recently there has been a lot more insurance companies that are willing to insure them, but there's all sorts of specifications about them with those insurance companies. Another con is that they're not built to any specific building code. Some people are out there, they're craftspeople, they're just making cool things that look like houses, but that doesn't mean it's safe to live in. And even if it is safe to live in, it doesn't mean that your government thinks it's safe to live in. And so there's like all these different steps and like your insurance thinks it's safe to live in. Your lender thinks it's safe to give you money based on the value of it. That All of those are, are big question marks depending on how it's built. Now, let me explain this in the fact that some tiny homes are built to HUD specifications where they're considered just basically small manufactured homes that are under 600 square feet. Some tiny homes are built to modular specifications where they have SIPS construction, which is structural insulated panels, and they are built to modular specifications. Some other ones are considered park models, which are built to RV specifications. If you're not savvy, you're not asking the right questions when you're looking at tiny homes, it can cause a real problem, especially when you get at home and you can't find insurance and you don't know what it's built to. And if you're trying to put it in a park, if it wasn't built to the RV specifications, they may not let you in because you don't have that certificate. With an RV tiny home, you get a certificate that allows you to park your uh, tiny home in one of those specific parks. And with that, you only have a limited time that you're allowed to stay in those parks in most states. Some areas will let you live there for a long period of time. Some of them will say you only can stay there for six to eight weeks. Now you can put a, a tiny home on a piece of land 
them. But again, that's one of those things that's going to be a real problem if your area doesn't allow for them. As much as local areas hate manufactured homes, a lot more local areas hate tiny homes even more. Now, more states are getting on board with this, like Vermont, California, Maine even, have loosened the laws when it comes to smaller structures being either in people's backyard or on a piece of land. Now, some tiny homes are considered ADUs and that people are going to be able to put into their backyard. That is another type of tiny home. So Ryan with How To ADU, I want to know, um, so what constitutes an ADU? It's a backyard house. It can also be converting part of your existing house into a home, like an apartment. And part of the magic is that it means it doesn't have like a really long history. And so every mm -hmm. city and county or state can come up with rules about what they want to define it as. And that's kind of the magic. So it's kind of a, a way that cities and states are finding to allow people to build in areas where they wouldn't have been able to build. And as a result, though, the definition, you really got to check your local planning code for what the definition is there. Again, built to totally different regulations. You're going to have to follow your state code when it comes to this. Make sure you follow the local laws, dot all your I's, cross all your T's, because someone's going to be breathing down your neck if you don't. Now, some of the pros of a tiny home, first of all, if you want that minimal lifestyle, hey, that's it. If you're getting an RV tiny home that you can travel around the world, you get to visit everything and bring your clothes and everything with you. If you're tying in a place, it's a very affordable place to live and you don't have to worry about cleaning too much. Another pro is they're super cute. You can get them in all sorts of different styles and shapes and when you look inside a lot of them have some really high-end cabinetry, loft space, wood flooring, bathrooms, everything's high-end because it's in such a tiny space you I mean you can afford to do it. But when it comes to tiny homes it's still the wild wild west. Do yeah. you think that will change? Yeah I hope so. I think but it's it, even when it gets changed it'll always be so kind of complicated and, and wonky. It's useful and that like somebody's taking care of it but it's not very helpful to the homeowner who's like what am I buying? And so what I usually say is don't try to learn the difference between title 24 and instead talk to the person who's providing this unit to you. What do I need to do to get a planning permit and a building permit or whatever the equivalents are in your area? And they should be able to tell you real fast. And if they kind of go, oh, I don't know, that's kind of your job or like that, that's kind of a red flag. <laughs> okay, give me the documents I need to go up to my planning and building department and figure this out before I give you a dollar. And if they're like, ooh, you really got to make a deposit before we give you the documents, I'm, I'm out the door. Like that's, mm -hmm. it, it's a house. They should be used to giving people these, the, this information. Great advice. Thank you. In the grand scheme of things, all of these three homes are fantastic affordable housing options for you to consider. You just have to go through the pros and cons and make your own list. To watch more videos about manufactured homes or tiny homes or even modular homes, go ahead and watch these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.